Welcome back to Vintage Super League. All right, who's up this round? We got Steve Mendian, the champ, versus Randy Bueller, the host. Go back. See more pseudo Dilbert X in action. <laughs> we got a, a mentor deck, and we've got the uh, the tribe from Atlantis. Any thoughts on this matchup? Um, no, not really. Um, I mean, I assume that the the uh, fish deck is favored, right? That's the only reason why it's playable. Is it's good against these Delver decks. I'm not really sure. I haven't, I haven't seen much of the uh, Merfolk versus Delver matchup. Once Delver became really good, I never really see Merfolk get played too often. So uh, once Treasure Cruise got printed, I, I guess Randy Randy ran it last year with the Treasure Cruise. But um, yeah, I don't know. I, definitely giving your creatures Island Walk is very real. But once that mentor comes down, like not being able to block is one thing. But also you can't really block on the other end because the prowess just kind of gets out of hand. So. Um, mm -hmm. Really going to depend on the removal, removal spells, trying to keep the lords under control. Um, yeah, I mean, cards like Null Rod in Randy's main deck not going to do too much in this matchup. I, I don't think Steve is really playing artifacts. I don't even think he's playing the Sensei's Divining Top that, that uh, Dave Williams is playing. So uh, not, not too many hits on that one. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's going to be some creatures fighting. Like tokens versus Merfolk and, uh, yeah. See who comes out on top. Uh, any thoughts on your map before we? Uh, no, I'm sure I, could, I, I probably could have won game one with some other gifts pile. I forgot. It. Like I just haven't played with this deck at all, so trying to f solve gifts piles on the fly was too much for me. Probably if I get like time walk, I think in the first game I win, um, and then game two, maybe there's nothing I could really do. I think. Fair enough. All right. So it, playing with pride side, we got Steve Menendian. Season 1 champion, 2-2 two and two right now, playing the Mentor deck. And on the play with power side, of course, Randy Bueller playing Murphle. Take a look at Steve's deck. And I want to say standard Mentor, but I guess that's not really a thing, as Mentor kind of just came out. We've got a bunch of cheap counter spells, as we've learned to expect from Steve Menendian. The full four Force of Wells and four Mental Missteps, no surprise there. But two Misdirections, Mr. Misdirection, um, two Power Blasts, two Fluster Storms, so lots of removal, and of course... Five Delve Spells, uh, the max that you can play, playing all four Dig Through Dimes. Treasure Cruise, of course, restricted now. Yeah, any, any thoughts on uh, on Steve's deck? Looks, I mean, it is the, you know, kind of his go-to, two misdirections. The one Stony Silence, I guess, is, I'm not sure what, in case he thought Randy was going to be on his Belcher deck again, you know, he's changing his deck around for that as well, uh, which makes some sense. It's, it's interesting, like, the meta gaming when you play against three known opponents. Um, that you can do, and you can really bias your lists towards what you think they're going to play here. You know, Randy sort of juked him, um, didn't run that back, so that, that main deck, Stony Island's not doing a lot in this matchup. Um, but my, my guess here, you know, is that it's going to favor favor fish structurally, you know, with only three swords for removal. Um, you know, it's not a lot of ways to take lords out, and they, the, 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 the Marvel can certainly get out of hand. Oh yeah, the, the two Pyroblasts, of course, are huge, as they counter any card in the deck, or kill any permanent, so, uh, the third one, the sideboard... Oh, sorry, I didn't see those two main, I thought you only had them on the board, yeah, with those, that, that certainly makes it even better. Of course, True Name Nemesis, the, uh, the big Merfolk, Cavern of Souls, being able to force it under counter magic, and that, that thing's tough to stop for, for a lot of decks. All the fair decks are, are generally going to be pretty afraid of True Name Nemesis, of course, giving it protection from a player is, uh... <laughs> Makes it tough, as you can't actually kill it, block it, do much with it. A uh, bunch of cheap counters. Actually, Rain's only playing two Null Rods, so not, not too many dead cards. Um, to match Steve's one Stony Silence, effectively Null Rod as well. Uh, looks like our players are ready, so I'll send it right down. Let's get Steve's opening hand. Just disappeared on me. <laughs> Look at Randy's opening hand, I suppose. Randy's got an interesting hand. I'm not sure who's on the play here. He's got only one land, but he's got a ponder and a good curve for the creature, so this would be a great hand with, with two lands. But uh, Yeah, he probably has to keep. I mean, he even has the misstep to force the ponder through, so mm -hmm. I feel like he needs to just keep and hope to find a land. Uh, yeah, not, not being able to play Curse Catcher necessarily on curve is tough. Um, although he is going to lead on that. I guess that's even more ponder protection, though. Yep. Alright, so Steve's opening hand, pretty solid too. Uh, a second copy of Dig Through Time, not going to be tough to turn on two of them. 
against uh, an aggressive deck like Randy's, especially with a bunch of, of cheap counter spells. So it's <laughs> not really what he's looking for, but he's got, got some cheap plays, looking to hit something nice off this ponder to try to accelerate getting this mentor out and try to turn these digs on. Anything cheap to uh, get some card jarring through is, is really what he's looking for, but of course... I, I like this misstep here from, from Randy. I like trying to not let them sculpt their hand. Yep. Uh, and you know he necessarily shouldn't see his curse catcher now to pick the ponder anyway from a, from an opposing misstep. Ooh, and that's a great obviously draws that from Randy. It's like he yeah, that was big. The tutor. Yeah, being on the cast the Lord, he's got force of will back up. This is gonna be tough for Steve to win. Um, yeah. I'm trying to think of what he's even looking to draw here. I guess cards like Pyroblast, Swords of Bush are the best thing he can do. Right, the curse catcher stops him from even mystically for his swords here in his upkeep. Mm -hmm. We'll get that swords resolve. He might do it anyway, just to. I mean, it starts fueling this dig. Right, it'll end up with, with uh, four cards in his graveyard and the curse catcher dying, which is slows down Randy's clock a lot. Yeah, I like upkeep mystical actually, just because I would trade mystical for curse catcher kind of in a heartbeat here. I assume he won't counter the mystical, right? He'll to account for the swords, but it's the same thing. Right. Decides to take a flare. Well, gush probably the best draw you could have. This, yeah. uh, As it often is. Yeah. So Steve just looking for some way to, to stop the bleeding, some cheap interaction, and uh, doesn't quite have that yet. Randy, Randy's draw is pretty great. Wow. Really <laughs> good too. Yeah, also just an awesome draw. Because again, all he needs to do is keep Steve off of stabilizing for a couple turns and these two fish will do will do enough damage. It's true. He could gush to save his land if he wanted to, should he get wastelanded here. Uh, but that does kind of set him back to the Stone Age as a more or less definitely a tough spot to be in. Well, what do you land you're taking with Randy? I think there's the, there's there's an argument for casting Ponder, for casting True Name, and for just saying go. Um, I can see... Uh, Arguments for all of those. I think I would cast Trune and Nemesis, but I, I don't think there's there's any line he can take right here that's wrong. Like they they yeah. all seem really strong. Yeah, I agree with you. If he was gonna ponder, I think he should have pondered before he played the wasteland. Sure. There's just no reason to show Steve that there's this place that can happen. Yeah, I, I think that he probably changed his plan mid attack, yeah. what he was planning to do. So Master of the Pearl Triad, Ancestral Recall on Island, those are not bad. No, not at all. He's going to be keeping these on top and just Ancestrally here, most likely. Yeah, I mean, he can Wasteland and then, and I guess this doesn't change that much, it really just protects from Pyrolost with the Curse Catcher to protect the Ancestral. Is there any reason to... If he sits on the Wasteland, Steve can never fetch without playing another land first to, set up, to, to turn, enable his... Um, Gush, of, if, specifically if, if Randy's trying to keep him off of Gush, he can just sit on this wasteland. That's true. Which I think I like that line. I don't Gush know is the only way Steve gets back in this. I don't know that Steve can, can respond to a, to a wasteland with casting Gush and win the game, though. He goes back to zero. Yeah, and he would need to hit like Lotus probably to have any kind of shot. Yeah, I mean, to have like a starting point. <clears throat> I mean, and that's without even factoring the fact that Randy has Force of Will in his hand. Mm -hmm. So, uh, a real tough spot. That's for sure. Is, uh, are we in Steve in Randy's end step waiting on Steve? Is that what's happening now? Yep, that's what it looks like. My guess is Randy fires off his ancestral in Steve's upkeep, maybe. Could wait till end of turn? Could wait to see what happens? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't see a lot of reason to cast in the upkeep in this particular spot, but I might be missing something. I think he kind of, like if he just casts something like Monastery Mentor, you just kind of get to sweep the leg on him pretty good. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know you have another Lord on top, too. Oh, true, and you know the top cards aren't interactive. There's no reason to, to be in a rush to draw them here. I forgot that we saw the the, the two. So, yeah, that makes sense. I, I like just waiting here. Mm 
He's gonna fire it off. It's hard to find any land that loses this game. For... Doesn't really do much. Yeah, exactly. These things look pretty awful. Alright. Well, Steve has to just let it resolve. Time I walk out. <laughs> TRG are here for Randy. Oh boy. Alright, I, I can't think of it. What's it what's he gotta draw? I can't imagine there's something he can draw here. He's getting wasted. More problems. Yeah. It's like he's looking to gush. He's going to cast the Mystical first. If he does, he gets whatever he gets Curse Caught. Not that that is going to affect things too much. It's like His best bet here is probably the Mystical for Swords, or Mystical for Pyre Blast, gush the two lands up, and then replay the land and cast the Pyre Blast. Right? But we, obviously Force of Will can interact with any piece of that. Well, I assume this is <laughs> if you can't replay the land, or he's going to get, like, you can't have mana floating. You can't play around Curse Catcher. Like if he gets if he gets so anyone, he he get curse caught. Wait, what's? You know, sorry, in the main phase, yeah, it will get curse catcher in his main phase. Yes. Whenever he casts whatever spell, it's it's gonna also the curse catcher. If Randy even wants it to. I mean, he could let the Lord die. Curse catcher could be more valuable when Steve's down to one land again. Yep. And he has a backup Lord in his hand. Yep. That's an interesting decision. I, th I I don't I don't mind that. I don't mind leaving the uh, curse catcher in play and getting your your lord killed. With Randy's specific hand, I'm actually not sure I even like this wastelanding because he could have just played another lord into time walk, right? Otherwise, yep. and just killed Steve. With force will back with up. Force yeah. That's that's what I would have done. Yeah. Yeah, I don't like this this wastelanding at all. He wants that color of his mana. His top card's probably a mox. It's really possible. Well, this is a pretty good hit. You can't do better. I mean, those were like kind of the two cards you'd most want to get from Mystical. Didn't yeah. actually see which one he got. I assume the swords, but he drew the Ancestral as well, so that could be, you know, that could force the Curse Catcher's hand and let him swords the other creature, in theory, if uh, if Randy didn't have a handful of gas. But uh, it definitely helps get him back into this game a little bit. I, I think that's exactly what he needed to start with. Yeah, I, I definitely think that Randy's getting punished pretty hard for using that wasteland here. Yeah. He's finding one of the only lines that gets him in trouble in this game. Well, it's still hard to imagine Steve being able to deploy enough to the board in time to not die. Yeah, but the real problem is that he doesn't have an answer to this true name nemesis, so even if he does wipe the board, he just gets true named right out. And he's so many turns away from even casting just Monastery Mentor. Right, like here, he's just gonna get his swords forced. Is he? I don't think he is. Yes. I, th I think you just save the force to for the make sure the true name lands, and then you're putting him on a three turn clock with force back up and time walk if he doesn't draw anything. Sh so. Sure, that makes sense. Ooh, well, I was right. <laughs> I said Mox, but Black Lotus counts. I guess the Lotus doesn't actually do much here. Yeah. Since he gave up his whole board, it's actually not that relevant. Yeah, I mean, he gets to get the Lord out. It's not huge, but uh, it's pretty good. I mean, Steve's turn... Steve's turn was basically the best he could do. Like, gush to save his land, mystical, hit the cards that he wanted. Obviously, one of them he tutored for, but the other one did wipe out the curse catcher, which is well above expectation for any card he could get. Do you even like? Do you like time walking there? I feel like I want to time walk when I have more of a board, like actually have power and play, not just to lightning bolt him. No, <coughs> I would not do that. Yeah. yeah, I would have saved the time walk to pitch the force of will if necessary. 
Yeah, I don't like this this turn either from Randy, but I think he's going to end up winning anyway. See, he's got two turns, but he can resolve dig through time here. I don't think he has any way in his deck to deal true name though, right? I mean, what can right. I? Right. I feel like Diggs right now finds Lotus, plays Lotus Mentor. Yeah, that's that's a start. It certainly could kill Randy first with the line Randy's taken. He doesn't have a great hand to still kill Randy first. I mean, he's sure. got a three drop and an eight drop, so uh, hard hard to go nuts with the the Mentor. Ancestral's already burned. He's not gonna have a graveyard. So he needs to hit Lotus and, and cheap cards, but he still only has two lands, too, so I guess he's looking for, like, Lotus Gush. He did hit the Lotus. He did hit a Gush. Um, interesting. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's definitely in this game now. I don't think he's in this game now, but he has live draws. Like, he's, he's oh, still he super, just, super buried. He goes, so, like, he goes Lotus Gush. Yeah, maybe, here, right? maybe, maybe, yeah, maybe. He has Lotus Mentor Gush, makes two guys. Like, he's very in this game. Well, is he going to gush this turn? He I think he gushes this turn. Guys. He has to, He can't make two guys. He has to if, use he gushes turn, if he gushes this turn and finds a Mox, he's actually like. If he finds Mox Sapphire, he's like winning, I think, like conclusively. Sure. I mean, if he can draw a Mox Sapphire, I'm not even sure if he. Maybe he's going to gush this turn. He already played a land. Obviously, if he didn't play a land, he gets to go completely nuts. Right. Could find Mox Sapphire, it's true. If that Mox her was a Mox Sapphire, I think he might even be taking that here instead of Gush. Uh, it's possible. Because he gets to play Preordain here. Yeah, I mean, it's not like you really want to bounce the land. You'd rather just be able to play Dak Fade and plus it and try to hit Gush that way. Or at least turn on Dig Through Time so you can go off the turn after. Like, he actually has two full turns unless Randy top decks again. Like, this master can't do anything, and True Name's only hitting for four. Right. So, he also has the, the potential line of, like, this was the easy one. gushing on Randy's turn lets him... Say, even if Randy draws another Lord, he can then block because he can just bounce both his islands, potentially. But that I don't think he wants to play that. I think he wants to gush just right here when he knows Randy can't counter because Randy only has one card in hand. Well, Randy has counters that he can cast. He's got, like, Spell Pierce and Daze. But he had Pierce here to Pierce the dig. Yeah, true. Right, so you know that the only counter spell Randy could possibly be holding at this point is Force of Will, because he would have countered dig. True. So I think you want the Gush just resolve right now. All right, let's see if Steve agrees. If he goes for the gush now. Nope, he's waiting. I don't like that. Well, what this does is he can actually block the the master and gush to to save his guy, where otherwise they would have to trade. Sure. So either way, he was going to have to block this master, um, or else it becomes a one turn clock. And obviously, Steve can't win next turn. So I actually do think he had to. Save the gush, or he'd be chump blocking with the token anyway. So I actually think this play is probably right. And you should gush right here, then in upkeep. That's also fine by me. A play doesn't involve Randy getting to draw a card before this gush gets cast. Uh, I guess that's what Steve's thinking about. I mean, knowing he has forcible in hand makes it <laughs> a much clearer play than, than Steve's seat, where it could really be anything. But, like, I mean, what else could it be that you care about, right? Like, I think... Well, it's not that you care about it. It's whether you think you get to eat this this Lord for free, which is a thing. You think Randy's attacking the Lord in here? He has to, right? I, if they I, trade, he just wins the game. Like, if Steve doesn't have a zero-cost spell, he just wins the game, right? Like, he has to trade off the Mentor, and the true name is a two-turn clock. If he doesn't block, it's a one-turn clock. So I, I think he had to attack. Oh, I don't know if I'm missing something there, but I'm pretty sure. Usually in these spots, though, Randy draws Treasure Cruise. Yeah, the best card you can draw. By a lot. It's, up, it's definitely pretty high up there. 
Alright, so I assume Gus will get fired off in response. Yep. Steve looking for force of will. If he does not find it, things are... Well, I mean, I guess they've been rough the whole game, so, so no big deal. Here we go. You hit it. <coughs> no, Man, too many dicker times. I figured he would draw like misdirection or something. Yeah, and Randy draws another lord and the fourth. This one's over now. Now there's no draw steps. True. <sighs> All right, so. Randy's going to go up the game here. Not sure what Steve has in the sideboard. Not too many, too often people come prepared for the, uh, the little merfolk. Let's see here. Slides on I guess it doesn't really matter if he plays the Lord of that, but Lord, for some reason, seems better to me. But I think it's meaningless either way. <coughs> Sorry. Yeah, I, I would have played the, the true name myself, but okay. uh, without really thinking about it. Yeah, yeah I guess they both, they both just win. Yeah, I mean, it's uncounterable true name that can't be dealt with on the board, and he has no islands in play currently. There's no way that he can do anything that is uh, that involves not playing islands and winning this game. Let's see... Randy's sideboard. Lots of things for shots. Looks like Randy's sideboard has a bunch of seal sabotage and a bunch of draft diggers cages, four of each of those, so uh, not too many things you're going to be looking to bring in. It looks like two dismembers and a fluster storm are going to be at the top of the list, and of course he's got things like no rods, which we talked about are not too exciting, so mm -hmm. definitely expect to see those come out. And on Steve's side. And Steve has another Pyro Blast. Yeah, he, he's got Pyro Blast. One Pyro Blast for one Stony Silence. That is uh, all I expect to have happen. Well, Steve's sideboard is four copies of Ingot Chewer and two copies of Wear Tear, a Pulverize, and a Mountain. Um, the cards that and a Hercules Recall. So lot, lots of shop stuff there, too. And three Graft Diggers Cages, another Stony Silence. So, like, tons of stuff for Artifacts and for Oath and some stuff for uh, for Dredge, but only one Pyro Blast for, for any other matchup, really. Yep. And uh, in his main deck, of can fully expect the Stony Silence to come out. Randy's playing one Mox Sapphire, one Black Lotus, so that's it. Uh, so, Dak Pretty Thaden. Pretty sure sideboarding here. <laughs> What's up? Pretty straightforward sideboarding plans here. Yeah, they just they just don't have cards. <coughs> Are we ready? Right back into the action. <laughs> I guess it didn't take too long to think about that. They probably thought during the last week at some point, like, what's the one card I should take out for the one card I should bring in? Oh yeah, Stony Silence, that does nothing. Alright, Steve gets to be on the play. The opening hand looked pretty nice. Randy's hand looks like hot garbage. Oh yeah, that's a moment. Yep, three lands, but you don't mind having lands against the Wasteland deck. Two cheap removal spells, a mental misstep, which is pretty strong. Not not great against the Merfolk deck, but um, they don't have too many things. They have Ancestral and they have Curse Catchers and of course their own missteps and you know some kind of spell pierces. Stuff like that, but that, that's kind of it. They, they don't actually play like the Preordains. And I guess Randy plays Ponder. Um, help fuel his treasure cruise, but uh, not not too many one-drops in the deck, but Randy happens to have multiples in this hand if he keeps it. I think he has to keep this on six. I think he does, too. But uh, the, Steve's hand's real good. Randy, so I think... We draw, yeah, Cavern has to take, I think Cavern's a card you two to four, so we've... Yep, Cavern is the best card he could draw. For one for one on tutors. <laughs> Not not close. So that curse catcher gets the hit. And it's good here. Like Curse Catcher's a pretty strong card. 
looks pretty innocuous, but uh, definitely pulls its weight. What card do you tutor up next if you're Randy? Hmm, good question. Um, I mean, he's probably Mock Sapphire. Strong one. I, mean, I guess Lotus is... Also very good. Yeah, I think a Lotus is actually marginally better. Being able to uh, avoid the Pyroblast to get your Merfolk into play, not so hot when you can just Pyroblast it anyway, but not doesn't apply to True Name Nemesis. Once that guy's down, he's down. So Cavernous Holes is pretty huge. Shipmine is a, a card you very often want to see, but doesn't do much this turn. I mean, of course, Randy needed to hit, hit lands to be able to unleash his hand anyway, so yeah. um, having them be two of the best lands possible, if not the two very best. I guess they are just the two very best is uh, definitely where you want to be. So here we're going to see this this uh, Master get Pyroblasted or Swords, one or the other. Mm -hmm. I don't know if Randy, I don't think Randy wants to fight over it. I think Randy wants to just let it happen here. Uh, it's definitely close. Like the fact that he can already make true name uncounterable is, is a big draw. But having force of will in your hand is just, it's just strong. Yeah, I like letting that go there from Randy. I think the way Randy loses this game is by getting a mentor out of hand, and so being able to fight over the first mentor is huge. Although we can see there are two here that that Steve's holding, so you can rebuy. Yeah, uh, the strip mine could potentially wipe Steve up. <laughs> <laughs> the strip mine could be huge. Uh, yeah. Steve does not draw a land, although I I assume what's going to happen is Randy's going to force this mentor and then play true name nemesis. Uh, That's what I expect to have happened too. Which I don't think you can afford to show in there. A resolved mentor is going to race the true name nemesis most games. That's yes. Pretty, pretty easily. Huge, easy. huge majority yeah. of them. Like Steve doesn't have a hand that can do anything with the mentor right now, but so many hits in the deck that just allow him to start to go crazy. So the best draw step for Randy here is going to be Days, probably. That would be a good draw. That would be a really good draw. Although, I mean, Steve could just draw land. Sure. Assuming that the turn A nemesis comes down this turn. Okay, easy force. Yeah, this has to be a force. I mean, if... Randy could draw a Lord here and change the way the game Lotus. Or that. I forgot about that one. <laughs> I didn't Actual best draw. I mean, Moss is better, clearly, but. Yeah. I did not see Lotus Bell even in this deck. I missed it. Wow. Yeah, definitely a great draw that, step. Again, it, it does nothing if Steve draws a land. It, it, it really is kind of irrelevant. But if he doesn't. It's absurd. I was kind of curious what was going to see what what, what Randy did had he not drawn this and had to choose between strip mining and, and, and true naming. I assume he would have true named, but but now we you know this is just an automatic strip mine here. Yeah. Alright, well. Steve really wants to draw land here. Oof, doesn't though. That's unfortunate for him. Yeah, he still has it. Like, I mean, <coughs> Randy doesn't get to tutor this turn. It's not like he's he's that under. Right. As long as Randy doesn't draw a wasteland, Steve's fine. Well, yeah, <laughs> he draws a wasteland. Over. Okay. A non tutor draw for sure this time. Alright. We have a brick. We have a brick. 
Alright, so Steve, he's going to want to land. Do you just sword this curse catcher here? He swords the curse catcher here. Eh. It, it gives oh. you one more turn. Well, yeah, but it, it also slows down your clock dramatically to lose a one mana spell. Going the other way. I can, I can see both ways on this. Um, I like doing this because it, it turns on your digs now, because you have six cards in the yard. Oh, yeah. I, I didn't even think about that. It also makes your gushes better. It's possible that he just curse catches to try to not let you know a mentor just come down after a gush right. results. Although, I, I don't think that play would ever actually come up. I'm not sure it's even good. Misdirection is a pretty big brick, though. Randy also breaking off here. A quick little honey appearance. The true star of the show. needs to draw kind of any cheap spells here. Oh, oh, oh no. That yep. is... No, that he can cast it. That's great for Andy. <laughs> Thought that Lotus was a blank draw, but then draws the one card that turns it on. Yeah. Any other turn, it, it would have been closer. Louise Honey's a small dog in every matchup, as you've established previously. <clears throat> All right, yeah. well, you didn't hit much off of that. So yeah, it's still a game. Failed to find the Lord here. Not the Lord, even if she does all that much in this spot. This is, wow. Not interesting. Uh, I guess he can't really afford to pay the two life, huh? <laughs> that was a good draw. Couldn't really afford to mental mist out that. Alright, so I assume Steve is going to lead with Ancestral here. Yep. You're looking to play Randy, which will be. He could just pyroblast this curse catcher. Wants to do that. He wants to wait on that play for until he has more tokens in play. Sure. Certainly reasonable. Well, we know that Steve is going to be deliberate and make sure that he has the play that he likes. Yeah, we can settle in here for a little bit. <laughs> Oh, let's see. He, he may be considering just slamming down another mentor and hoping that he can make so many tokens next turn to win the following turn and hope to fade a lore. That seems seems too risky, but maybe he just can't deal 22 damage with one mentor. I mean, he can make right, a few tokens. <clears throat> ancestral still, though. I mean, he just casts yeah. Ancestral, draws a land, plays, and still feeds into that line. Yeah, true. I'm not sure what, what he's considering by not just firing off this Ancestral, because there's going to be a lot more to think about once it, once it goes through, right? Here. Still on the bank.
<laughs> so we're casting ancestral, right? Yeah, yeah. Anyone want to disagree with that? Well, he's tapping white. Oh, undoing. We almost had an action. Rethinking, tapping white. So is he just casting monster mentor? No. Eh, maybe. It's risky. Uh, he's to a number of things here. He's got to have to a few draw stuffs. He can't beat any lord. No, mm -hmm. can't beat. I don't like that line. I would have ancestral there for sure. And he could have cast ancestral and then probably played a mentor anyway. Right. That that. I mean, well, I guess that's not necessarily true because fetch lands are no good here. Can't really afford to go to six. Alright. Force of Will is definitely a good draw from Randy, although I'm not sure it's going to change this particular game. I don't think so. Randy would have much rather drawn a Lord there. Oh yeah, Lord Lord was the best draw, but Without without seeing any of the hands, I mean, he still has the turn to draw the board. Right, of course. Although it can get pyroblasted now, so I, I guess he really no, okay, because oh yeah, once it's sorry, once it's in play, it can get pyroblasted. Yes, of course. <coughs> so now Steve will lead off with ancestral, probably. In all likelihood. Hey, Randy, you have to miss up this, right? Um, you potentially force of will here to play around this step, but... Uh, okay, so, sure. I, I like forcing instead of misstepping, but I'm saying you, I think you have to counter there. Yes. Yeah, forcing is way better than misstepping. And one of the things I was trying to get was that, is there any chance you don't counter because you don't want to let him re-counter and get more Monastery Mentor triggers? Or Monastery Mentor triggers? But I don't think it's worth it, because I mean, the spells you're going to draw are going to be way better. Now you're going to get very punished here for casting the wrong counter spell. Yep. That's not like super punished. What would have happened is the we would have gotten misdirected. Like the misdirected sustain the same. Actually, it's possible Steve should have done that anyway. Uh, he had to pay mana for that, and the misdirection is not actually going to do anything at any point, is it? He couldn't he, misdirect the misstep though, right? Oh, okay. Yeah. If he has force of will, he might have gotten punished by the by the misdirection. I'm sorry. Right. And Randy finds, or Steve finds an untapped non fetch land, which is great. Yeah, it'll let him. Well, the gush, the gush already takes care of that. Sure. That is true. I did not notice he already he had the, the gush as well. Looks like Steve is going to win this game. He has to survive a turn, but I'm, I don't know what Randy can draw now. Like, as, assuming Steve plays around Curse Catcher and leaves up two mana so he can Pyroblast and pay. Lord can't can't stick, and he's going to be attacking for a million next turn. I think Steve wins this game. I, I can't think of anything Randy could draw now. Yep. This is odd. Why is he fire blasting here? You definitely. Yeah. He that I don't have like. Fall, does he? I don't think he's close to lethal. No, he only has two attackers. That that seems really bad. Yeah, this is a this is a really big mistake. Why wouldn't you just preordain there? Or I mean, or gush, know. or any you know why? Yeah, that seems very odd. And now when he gushes, he can't even gush into his swords. He's in a white mana. Can't up. can't preordain um, because he needs to leave up two mana for pyroblast curse catcher. Oh, true. So true. you should just gush. Could gush or he could do nothing. This is this is real real bad though. 
So now he's dead. Now that he has a whole bunch of outs to win the game. Um, <coughs> any Lord will do it. Can't be countered. This isn't lethal. That, like, there's no way it's even close to lethal, is it? Or I mean, I think yeah. none of these Two tokens, none of these tokens came into play before this turn. Yeah, he's just hitting him for for twelve. Well, he can cast gust too. Sure. But to me, I guess if he hits a mox or a lotus, or he's multiple, he already right? gets lotus, of course. But I mean, he, no mox. He doesn't have anything he can cast for one. If it's a mox. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. What does your mentor here? Sort of like an on the board tendrils attempt here. It's interesting. Found a mox. Mox. Alright, so now he gets the gush. How big are these right now? Now there's seven sevens. There's seven sevens after the mox? Yeah, maybe it's just killing him. I still can't. There's not that many things he can hit. Yeah, he has to gush into. He hasn't used Lotus yet, right? Randy Lotus this game. So if he hits Lotus, he wins. Sure, okay. I, I thought he Lotus out a mentor, but I guess that didn't actually happen. No. Alright. Well, if he didn't do all of this, he was definitely going to win. Now, uh... He gets to make it interesting. He's went to combat. He's not even trying to kill him. Why wouldn't you just gush there? I'm so confused. This is just bizarre. What is going on? Did you draw a lord? Yeah, he draws the lord. So Steve has uh, punted this game. Maybe he, he can still out. gush into a, a pirate blast here. No, uh, yeah, yeah, true. I can't believe it. So now if he gushes into Lotus, he would have actually had to kill. Yep. We'll, we'll, we'll get to find out if he should have killed Randy on his turn. I don't understand. This That, that line is so confusing. Oh, yeah. <coughs> I mean, he had to get, like, Randy had to tutor a lot of times to, to win this game. But Steve still just had the win. Just didn't see it. Could still draw Pyroblast. Nope. And he's dead. He wouldn't have won that turn, so he needs to just leave up Pyroblast, um, lock Randy out of the game. Did not yeah. happen, though. Yeah, if he leaves up mana, it's just the game is unlosable. All right, so uh, <laughs> Randy Bueller, ladies and gentlemen, wins that game. He had the degree check mark. Honey is excited. <laughs> well. That, that, that'll do it. Got punished maximally for that uh, for that line. Yeah. If you tried to kill him, I could kind of understand it at least, but I don't, yeah, not gushing there, which is so bizarre. Well, yeah, trying to kill him is certainly a thing just because, you know, you don't actually know what Randy's last card is. Right. Um, it can't be relevant, though, right? Like, doesn't it kind of have to be a force of will or, or a mental misstep or something? Yeah, like a land or something. I mean, if it's mental misstep, you can't... You can't be misstep. You would have misstep. You would have remisstep the, the ancestral to start the turn. Yeah, of course. You can't be mental misstep. I, I was, I threw out a card and then I'm like, oh, wait, if he has mental misstep, he can't, he can't win power blast anyway. But yeah, it literally cannot be a castable spell. Yeah, has to be forcible. Or it has to be forcible or land. Yeah, that's the only two cards that are possible in in uh, Randy's list for that to be. Yep. Man. All right. Well, so. Randy goes to three and two, gets his first win since uh, his double win in week one, and Steve, after starting two and zero, is a uh, falling falling back. He's gonna he's gonna need to go on a bit of a run to make the playoffs down to two and three, I believe. Mm -hmm. He's catching up to me. He better, uh, uh, better be careful. <laughs> We've got Luis Scott Vargas and Bob Meyer, probably couple people that people have heard of at least once or twice. They've put up a few accomplishments here and there. Of course, Pro Tour Champions, Hall of Famers, and two of the top ten players of all time, so no big deal there. <laughs> and uh, both with good records, I believe. Um, I think Bob's at 2-2, two and two, Luis at 3-1. I think that sounds right. Yep. 
Yeah, so Luis has a chance to move into second place with Bakula with a win. He loses. Uh, got a big scrum, him and Bob and several others at 3-2. and two, So uh, definitely a lot on the line this match. And got some, got some good players. Uh, it'll be me and Randy in the booth, so you guys should definitely tune in for that one. Honey, say bye. <laughs> bye, honey.